Hey guys, Arlisha here. Welcome to another video. I have three more Inktober pieces to show you. These are from days five, eight, and nine. I won't be showing you pieces from days six and seven simply because I did not do them. As I mentioned in my very first Inktober video, I believe I'm planning to skip the weekends to give myself time to plan sketches for the week ahead and also to just kind of take a break and not have to think about it for a couple of days. For myself personally, that's a really great way for me to make sure I get through the month as a whole. It wasn't necessarily a plan, but all three of the pieces that I am sharing with you today focus on parts of the body that aren't a face or a portrait, so specifically hands and feet in the cases of these pieces and I'm really excited about them actually. I really love focusing on different parts of the body and I think it's always really interesting to see pieces focused on something other than a portrait so I hope you guys will enjoy them as well. The primary things that I wanted to talk to you guys about were the techniques and supplies that as the days go by I am reaching for more and more and every day I find myself kind of wanting to grab these things or try them out. I will have mentioned some of them to you guys already, but I want to specifically dedicate some time to talking about them. So the texture that you're seeing in the background of this piece is actually from one of those things that I've been reaching for, which is table salt. So by just adding a bit of salt to the ink while it is still wet, the salt will kind of dissolve into the liquid ink and it causes this really beautiful spreading texture effect. It's the same thing with watercolors, but I especially like it when you have the stark contrast between a dark ink and that spreading texture. I think it's a really great way to get some texture into a background without a lot of work and since Inktober pieces involve doing a piece every day, less work is always a good thing in my opinion. As far as the specific ink I'm using, I think it's by Platinum. I'm using a carbon black ink so it's just a black ink for this piece and it's waterproof so once the ink is dry I could go in with more washes or with watercolors if I was inking something and then painting it and and I really like this. It's kind of a bit more of a warm black, this one in particular. And I really like the way that it waters down into softer washes and it's just a lot of fun to use. You'll notice that at one point I got out actually a fine liner because I was really curious about trying that out and using it. So I got it out and I used it for part of the hand and I did not like it at all. And I immediately was like, no, I don't, I don't want to do this. And I got my brush back out and it was just so much more enjoyable and that kind of brings me to the next things that I found that I'm really loving which is just inking with a brush. Now this is not quite the same thing as if I was inking with brush pens for example like the Pentel pocket brush pen or something. I really like that I can control the amount of ink that is on my brush when I'm working with this and it just for allows for the greatest amount of control and an experience that I find just so very enjoyable every time I ink with the brush because I can quickly go from doing some fine inking to covering large areas with broader strokes back to back and that's really really fun for me. And that's something that I've kind of been learning as the days have gone by is that inking with a brush is my hands down my favorite way to ink. I can use different colors easily and I don't have to worry about ink cartridges in a brush pen or anything like that. I can just grab whatever color it is I want to use and I'm good to go. As far as specific techniques, you guys may notice a specific trend where I have been wetting my paper. So at the beginning of this second piece and the first one as well, I just completely wet my paper. I'm using watercolor paper by the way. The first one I believe was Arches hot press paper and this second one is uh, the paper that I got from AliExpress. It says Bao Hong on the actual packaging of the paper, but if you go on AliExpress, it's actually easier to find the paper by searching for Meaden cotton watercolor paper. Anyway, as always, the links for all of this stuff will be down in the description. And I, yeah, I've been using some of my favorite watercolor papers. I've been actually trying to use the Arches Hot Press a little bit more for these experiments because I haven't really liked it in the past and it's given me a hard time, but I wanted to kind of take the advantage of this opportunity to get to know that paper a little bit better. You may have noticed that pretty much all of my Inktober pieces are exactly the same size. Well, they are. They're all seven inches by 10 inches. So I have been creating a rough sketch for each piece and then using my light box to transfer that onto my 
watercolor paper. And when I do transfer that, I usually use a colored pencil like a Prismacolor Cola Race in Vermilion or Crimson Red, but my favorite one to use is the Prismacolor Varathin, either in Crimson Red or their Blue. Is that just called Blue or is it Royal Blue? I don't know. The blue one. The red one and the blue one, depending on the color scheme that I'm going for for the piece overall, I kind of switch it up sometimes between the red and the blue. I just really enjoy using those pencils and then I don't have to worry about anything smudging when I'm laying down washes or in the instance of this one I actually used a little bit of watercolor in the very beginning and in the last one as well to add that pop of color. I've told you guys this before as well, but I'm using a lot of fountain pen inks. I really like that the inks are usually made up of different dyes. So this greenish one, for example, looks like it has some brown in it and some yellow and just a lot of really earthy tones and the way that that breaks down when you apply it as a wash or apply it onto wet paper is just really, really fascinating for me. And learning about all of these different inks has been just so much fun. I can dilute them and use them as lighter washes or I can use the ink at full strength and get tons and tons of depth. As another side note, I know I had mentioned to you guys before about this taping technique that I'm using where the first thing I do is I flip my piece of paper over that I'm going to be painting on and I tape it on the back all the way around the outside edges and then I flip it over so the piece is face up again and then I tape the outer edges again but I'm not taping onto the paper, I'm taping onto the tape that is now face up from the back side. And this has been allowing me to tape all the way to the edges of my paper. I had expressed a concern to you guys before about the fact that I felt like I was just using a crazy amount of tape doing it this way, literally twice as much tape as I would have been using on a normal piece where I just taped the front edges of the piece. And you guys gave me some really awesome suggestions. So thank you for taking the time to mention what you have done or what you think might work. And what I've been doing for the past few days that's been really helpful is I've been using my higher quality tape that I really like on the back of the piece. So the areas where the tape is directly touching the paper and I want that to stay firmly. I don't want it to rip my paper. And then I've actually been using a cheaper masking tape to go on top of the tape and then down onto the board that I'm taping on. I found that tape sticks to tape very, very well, so I don't have to worry about that specific connection point being super high quality tape. And I don't have a ton of issues with this tape lifting up from the board. It stays on relatively nicely. Sometimes it lifts a little bit, depending on how much the paper buckles. But overall, I found that this works really well combining higher quality and cheaper tapes. So thank you to the person who recommended that because there was somebody specifically in the comments of a previous video who mentioned that. And as far as the specific brushes that I'm using, I usually link them down in the description as a set because that's how I got them. The primary brushes that I reach for are a three pack. It's like a starter set of calligraphy brushes from Blue Heron Arts. I've talked about them before, specifically in a video I made about my favorite brushes, but at the time I was just using them mostly for painting and watercolors. And since then I have of course started to use them for actual inking and line work and they're just, it's so much fun. The middle sized brush, which is the darker bristled one, is really great. It's a nice kind of firm brush that's actually really nice for laying down washes but still getting into slightly smaller spaces and the smallest one is the one that I primarily used for my finer inking the actual line work but that set is like it's 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 so great I love it it's a really nice set for getting started with calligraphy brushes I really like to use ink washes and simple line work. I've been focusing a lot on big, large shapes in my pieces, so I know a lot of people take advantage of Inktober as an opportunity to, lo to do lots of fine inking details and really interesting textures and elaborate line work, and I, I enjoy seeing that so very much. But for me, I, I wanted to kind of keep these simple, and I think that when you're working with the human figure and anatomy, it's such a great opportunity to have large shapes that can be arranged with negative space, like with the background, in such interesting and cool ways. So that's kind of the approach that I'm taking and uh, I'm just trying not to get too crazy with the details. I love it and it's something that I definitely want to explore more and I'm a little bit afraid of doing, but it's been really nice to just kind of let each piece be a bit simpler. I really like this purple ink on the end. It's by Jay Urban. I can't remember the name of it, but of course it'll be down in the description. And that one was really nice. It had this really beautiful, deep, 
velvety sort of finish and that that's probably my favorite thing so far about working with the ink is that it has so much depth it's so rich of, in color I mean because it's used in such a concentrated form usually in the fountain pens you're making small lines and you want those to be high contrast and to be visible the ink just has so much depth and it's just so satisfying to use at different strengths and it's a lot of fun so I would love to hear from you guys down in the comments. Let me know how Inktober is going for you. Have you been making illustrations each and every single day? Or have you been kind of skipping every other day? Or are you skipping the weekends like me? How's it going? Are you having fun? Are you running out of ideas? And let me know what you think about the pieces that I have been creating so far. It's definitely been a super fun experience. I'm trying to keep things a bit more laid back this year and not stress myself out too much. And I hope you guys are all doing very well, and I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.